Midnight Love is Marvin's 17th album and unfortunately the last album that he will release um, that he will record before he was murdered by his father. This album was dropped in 1981, I want to say, and um, and it was a uh, it was a comeback album by Marvin Gaye. Actually, I take that back. It was it was it was a uh, drop November 8, 1982. It was recorded during 1981. Marvin uh, was extremely dissatisfied with Motown. He left after the way they handled the In My Lifetime album, and he got out of there. And there was a bidding war. Columbia is the deal he went with, and he made a comeback album. Marvin was still living in London at the time. He was still going through a lot, emotionally, physically, and a guy came along by the name of Freddie Cousard and offered him a lifeline. Marvin accepted, got himself back together, got back into church, and got <laughs> inspired to make music again. We're in the 80s. We've come a long way from the 60s to the 70s to the 80s. Sound that changed. Reggae is uh, a thing. It always was a thing, but it, it, I say it's a thing because it was you could hear his influence on this album with Third World Girl, which is a tribute to Bob Marley. He did not express it that way because he did not want to exploit the man's name to sell, sell a record, but it was. You had synth, you had New Wave, of course funk is here, uh, synthesizers, so there are a lot of new sounds and, and instruments for Marvin to play with, and he did. And you can hear that on, on, on this album. It um, Triple Platinum. It did very, very well with sexual healing leading the pack. And once again, Marvin was a hit maker returning to the top of the charts, led by that single, which was inspired by David Ritz, who wrote the biography on Marvin Gaye, Divided Soul. He was looking at some magazines Marvin had in his room or his apartment, and he is said to have stated to him that he was in need of some sexual healing, and Marvin, of course, took it from there and wrote the hit record. As we've been on this journey, you may have noticed that Marvin has a history of receiving his inspiration and influences from others and taking that and putting the spin on it and making it to a banger. Marvin also had a song, I think it was the first song on here, Midnight Love, which was uh, Rich James was popular, which was influenced by Rick James. He, he put that out there. You can hear that on the extended version. It took about two minutes before Marvin even began singing on that song. So you can hear the sounds are different on here, and Marvin was still able to craft a hit. He wanted to get away from the introspective records, he stated that he needed to make a hit, and he made one on this particular record. He only had one ballad on here, which is by far one of my favorite Marvin songs, Till Tomorrow, the falsetto, and the way he closed that song out. I, it, it's, it's such a beautiful record. And I was really disappointed that I didn't hear, have more ballads on here, but I understood it. I understood why he did it that way, because he has you know, the I Want You album, the Let's Get It On albums. He has all these other albums. So, and you know, in this particular time, being away and and in my in our lifetime, not really doing it well, and uh, here my dear not doing it well. He wanted to just get back to doing what he does best, and kind of that '60s version of Marvin, and make hits before he went on that album concept run that he did. But um, but yeah, it was a really really great album. It was a hit. It was revised later by Eric Sermon, taking the sample from Turn On Some Music and and using that in one of his his songs, which was the number one rec hit at the time. It had a lot of impact, a lot of influence. The Osley Bro Brothers on record of saying that it influenced their 1983 album, Between the Sheets, and um, a, a lot of people um, were influenced. So Marvin was back to doing what he does best, and that is shaping and molding and influencing music for years to come. And um, Sexual Healing is really great. Rocking After Midnight is, is cool. That one grew on me as I listened to it more and more, uh, just the way that towards the end that he started to close with the ad-libs and stuff like that. So it's one, it was one of those songs that just took time for me to kind of start to pick up on, like a lot of the different things that he was doing. Joy was cool. I love the closing. My love is waiting. Sort of a mid-tempo, slow-esque type record, and it was really, really good. And that's pretty much it. 
it is driven by sexual healing. It had a couple of other singles on here, but everybody knows sexual healing. And Marvin, once again, has put out a number one hit, a number one album in three different decades. So take that for what it's worth. And I take that for him being the greatest of all time. So I'm going to leave it there. We have some other albums to record that w were released after his murder, and we will cover those as well. This is, uh, this is it. This is the end for him and the end for him putting out albums where he had creative and control over how they are distributed and sounded, and, um, and that's that. So we're going to close this thing out, and we'll catch you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.